Welcome to Aspire on Glorious Vision Television, a program designed to share the secret of success and also to speak to the time, to make us to understand what the Holy Bible says about contemporary issues that is disturbing our mind today. This program is designed for elucidation, for expansion, for empowerment and for equipping. And we know that the Holy Spirit will teach us and make us to know what is perfect for his will in the mighty name of Jesus. This program is going to revive our spirit, our intellect, our soul, and our mind. And it's going to expand to us issues that will give us success in our life. In this edition, we are going to commence series on kingdom style mentoring. Kingdom style mentoring. This may be a very long series where we are going to talk about mentoring as it affects individuals, families, and church. We believe that the Holy Spirit will teach us and He will take us through the journey of this series. My name is Sheyi Oshuntayo. I will be your anchor on this program. We may sometimes receive some guest speakers also on this program. But we know Holy Spirit is constant here, and He will be constant with us in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome to another exciting edition on Aspire. In the last episode, we spoke about what mentoring is not, and we attempted to define in a perspective way what mentoring is. Now today, you want to look at kingdom style mentoring, the Bible examples. Kingdom style mentoring, the Bible examples. And we believe that the Holy Spirit, who has been helping us to understand what we have been discussing on this program, will continue to help us illuminate our hearts, and inspire us further as we commit to this discussion into the hand of our Lord Jesus Christ to illuminate our hearts to understand all that will be discussed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Kingdom style mentoring, the Bible examples. Kingdom style mentoring, the Bible examples. The Bible provides quite a number of examples of mentor protege relationships from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Though the Bible did not mention the word mentoring, since the language wasn't in use as at the time of the Bible records. But the relationship we are discussing here depicts the law of mentoring. The relationship between those men in the Bible, if we are to look at them today, we will be talking about mentoring. So, let us examine few of these relationships and see how they affect our contemporary lives. First, we look at the Old Testament examples. Then, we will look at the New Testament examples. The first example we want to look at here is Jethro and Moses. Jethro and Moses. Sometimes Jethro was called well in another passage of the Bible. But in Exodus chapter 18, verse 8 to 27, we see how the Bible relates to us the relationship between Jethro and Moses. Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. And he mentored his son-in-law, Moses, to learn the principles of delegated authority. Delegated authority in leadership. His son, Moses, was doing all the works as a leader of the ancient Israel. And when Jethro saw him, he did not want his son-in-law to be worn out in carrying out his leadership role. So, 
he put him through how to use the concept of delegated authority. How Moses could delegate authorities to some of his courts, to some of his followers, and by that, he won't be the judge of over a thousand people that will be coming to him from time to time. And we saw how Moses appointed 70 leaders plus himself to lead and to judge Israel. And by this, Moses became effective and a better leader through the mentorship of Jethro. Another example of this mentoring relationship is that of Moses and Joshua. Moses and Joshua. We can see this in the book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 1 to 8. Joshua, Exodus, chapter 31, verse 1 to 8. Moses mentored Joshua and prepared him to assume the leadership role, to assume the leadership responsibility of Israel after him. The style of this mentorship is called passing the mantle mentorship. Passing the mantle mentorship. Joshua followed Moses and he studied how Moses led Israel, especially in the wilderness. And when the leadership mantle fell on Joshua to lead the Israelites into the promised land, he had already learned enough leadership responsibility, leadership roles from Moses. And he became a good successor to Moses, his mentor. This, again, we can see in the book of Exodus, chapter 31, from verse 1 to 8. Another example is that of Barak and Deborah. Or, should I put it like this? Deborah and Barak, because it was Deborah who mentored Barak. And we can see this in the book of Judges, chapter 4. We read from verse 4 to verse 16. Judges, chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 16. Deborah, as a judge over Israel, challenged Barak to be the commander of the military and encouraged him when he was fearful. Barak didn't want to take the leadership, and he was pushing Deborah. And as we know, the Israel uh, nation was more of a patri patrilineal nature than a matrilineal. And then Deborah, being a woman, challenged Barak, this is the role of a man to lead us to the war. And Barak took this challenge, and they achieved results victory over the Canaanite army. The mentoring of Deborah and Barak was a challenge, was a motivation to Barak to take over the mantle of commandership, commander of the military. Another relationship in mentoring is that of Naomi and Ruth. Naomi and Ruth. This is seen in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, Naomi had a son who had two wives. And they went on an exile. While they were there, this guy died. And the two wives became the property of Naomi, the mother-in-law. Naomi encouraged them to go and look for another husband. Because as it were, she was an old woman. She couldn't give birth to anyone that would become the husband of these two women. But Ruth remained adamant and held on to the mother-in-law. Let your God be my God. Where you go, I will go. And Naomi was challenged by this Ruth commitment to the family. And Naomi became a mother to Ruth. Naomi became a mentor to Ruth, and she mentored Ruth, gave her a well-considered advice, and the advice that was given to Ruth was taken. And today, the minority daughter-in-law of Naomi 
was able to avoid a life of poverty and discrimination because Naomi mentored her on what she will do to become a mother and to become a wife. Ruth became a woman in history. Maybe you don't know she was one of the great grandmothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this was as a result of a good mentorship that Naomi provided for Ruth in her life. Eli and Samuel was another example of mentorship in the Bible. This we can find in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 to chapter 3. How Eli mentored Samuel. Well, no matter how bad Eli was a father, he was a good mentor. Because the little Samuel, the innocent Samuel, was at the verge of understanding the voice that was calling him. When he heard the name, Samuel, Samuel, he thought the voice was the voice of his father in the Lord, who was Eli. And he went to Eli, and what Eli did was very significant. Eli mentored Samuel to know and to hear from God, to understand that it was God that was calling him. And Samuel had and understood the voice of God. And Samuel, at the end of the day, became a prophet that could speak to the nation. Eli raised Samuel, and Samuel eventually succeeded Eli. And that is all what mentorship is all about. In the last edition that we mentioned what mentorship is not, we listed some of the values, some of the futures of mentorship. And this can also be seen in some of these names we are mentioning and relationship we are talking about in the Bible. Another mentorship example is that of Samuel and Saul. Samuel and Saul. This we could find in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. Book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. Samuel was able to identify Saul as a future leader of Israel. Samuel tried to shape and reshape him into a man of principle. However, whether Saul was teachable is another question entirely. But Samuel played his role as a mentor. Unfortunately, Saul turned away from God and Samuel challenged him on several occasions about his attitudes towards God. Saul might have been a bad mentee. Saul might have been a failure, but Samuel mentored him. We mentioned some of this in the principles and the laws of mentorship. And one of the laws of mentorship quite approached this. No matter how good your mentor could be, you as a protege must be teachable. You as a protege must be a good ground for mentorship. You don't be like Saul that started well and ended badly. Another example of mentorship that we can find is also the relationship between Samuel and David. Samuel and David. Samuel discovered David when he went into the house of David's father to anoint a new son, a new king. The Lord told him, for how long will you look at Saul when I have rejected him? Go into the house and anoint for me a new king. And the house was the house of Jesus. Jesus was the father of David. Samuel anointed David into leadership. He did not only anoint him. He stood by him. He trained him and mentored him. Even when Saul was trying to hunt him down, Samuel was there for him. And David became the anointed king of Israel. And David ruled over Israel after the death of Saul. Another mentorship relationship that I want us to look at here is also that of David and Solomon. David and Solomon. David prepared Solomon, his son, 
to be king after him. It went down in history. And significantly, that David was the only king in Israel that prepared succession or that had a succession plan for himself and made it while he was alive. He charged his son on the do's and don'ts of the king. This is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Another relationship is that of Elisha and Elijah. Elisha and Elijah. This kind of mentoring is called passing on the mantle, like we see in the case of Moses and Joshua. Elijah's coat was a symbol of his authority. And when Elijah picked up the coat, the mantle deeply fell on him. And the mantle of that of Elisha, Elijah fell on Elisha. He took over Israel, a role for which Elijah helped him to grow. Another example in the Old Testament is that of Mordecai and Esther. Mordecai and Esther. This relationship is an example or a good example of sowing the seeds in people's life. Mentoring affords us the opportunity to sow seed, the seed in the life of others. And that is what Mordecai did for Esther. Mordecai made use of this advantage to rescue his people from destruction. Mordecai was a Jewish man who was living in Persia. He mentored his cousin, Esther, who later became a queen and found herself playing a surprising role as a queen in Persia. And this we all needed to climb on so as to save the lives of those in destruction. Now, uh, Mordecai climbed on the relationship, climbed on the seed sowed on Esther, and he saved his generation from total destruction. These examples are the examples that we have found in the Old Testament of kingdom-style mentoring. Another examples are the examples in New Testament because the New Testament is also filled with such examples. And I know by the next edition, we will be looking at the New Testament examples that we can see as kingdom style mentoring. I believe that all we have had today will also buttress what we have been hearing in the time pass on kingdom style mentoring. Don't forget that this series, like we have said, is a long series and it will continue in this quarter. I pray as we listen, the Lord will lead us to the good mentor in our lives. Those who will sow great seeds in our lives and we shall also become mentors to sow great seeds in people's lives. And like the kingdom style mentors that we have mentioned in the scriptures, we will also be able to draw examples from them and develop people into better leadership. Our nation needs a good leader. Our nation needs better leader. And this we can do through mentorship. Let's sow seeds in other people's life so that their lives can be better. I pray the Lord will lead us to good books that we are going to read in the course of the week. The Lord will lead us to the right people that we meet in the course of the week that will lift us higher and make us better in our lives. I pray until we meet in the next edition. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you and may the Lord guide and protect you from all the evil of the day and that of the night. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>